Hey everybody, this is Mr. Bullock, and I uh, hope you guys had a first uh, couple of days of school. This is our second lesson in our new textbook that we're doing, the Integrated Math 1 textbook. So this one's called Solving Equations to Define a Unit. So it's more of the same of what we did before. Uh, don't forget, all of your lessons will be found, or can be found, at www.mrmathblog.com. Let me show you what that looks like, you guys. So if you go to mrmathblog.com, um, I have listed Algebra 1, Algebra 2, all kinds of classes here. We're d right here where it says Integrated Math 1, and I only have the first two uh, lessons loaded so far, but you'll see I'll have the whole year loaded up. There's going to be several more of these, but you just go and click this link on, and then you'll see the video that you're watching right now. So, uh, you know, after the end of the school year, or even after the semester, it'll look, you know, anyone like this. Here's Algebra 2 right here. Okay, I think, there we go. So, uh, anyway, so these are all the lessons in Algebra 2 right there. So, that yours will look just like that. Let's get back to this lesson here. So, so here we go. Um, uh, one useful application of algebra is to use an equation to determine what a unit of measure represents. So, we're going to be doing that in this lesson. So, here we will use the concept of working backwards and the properties of equality to define these units. So, we're going to be solving equations. So, Here's a problem here. We have an airplane that descends from 28,090 feet to 12,250 feet in altitude. A radar traffic uh, control informs us that this is a drop in elevation of three miles. So use uh, the two measurements to determine how many feet there are in a mile. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to drag the values to the correct places to calculate the altitude dropped in feet. Okay, well we started at 28,090 uh, feet. So I uh, definitely know that this number is going to go right there. Okay, and then uh, it says it descends from this and it gets to this. So this 12,250, is that going to go here or here? Well, uh, it's going to go here. This is where it descends to. This is our final uh, destination is right there. So, so it must have descended this much right here, the 15,840. So 28,090 minus 15,840 will give us this 12,250. Okay, so this is how much it descended. This is what it descended to, but this is how much it descended right there. Okay, so... Uh, it, it tells us that this is a drop in elevation of three miles. So this number right here represents our three miles right there. Okay, now the question is asking how many feet are there in a mile? So what we're going to do is choose the correct relationship between the height, uh, the height dropped in feet, uh, which is that 15,840, and the number of feet per mile, and we'll call that F, okay? So recall that 15,840 is three miles. So which one of these uh, equations looks like this one right here, okay? This one does right here. This would be my 3F, where F is the feet per mile right there. And since we have three miles right here, so 3F will be uh, equal to that right there. That's going to look like this guy right there. So we're going to solve this equation right here. Okay, we're going to use the division property of equality and solve. So what we're going to do is divide both sides by this 3 and figure out what is F. How many feet are in F in one mile right here? So when we divide it, we get 5,280 feet in each mile. All right, here's another question. An ostrich, uh, that you guys know what an ostrich is, one of those big birds. So is it, uh, uh, that is 70 inches tall. 70 inches is almost 6 feet, you guys. 72 inches is 6 feet. Uh, ostrich that is 70 inches tall is 18 inches taller than two times the height of a small dog. Oh, boy. Uh, okay, so what is the height of the dog in inches? All right, well, let's break this down little by little. This 70 inches is... This 70 is here, and is always means equal in math right here. Okay, let's talk about this. 18 inches taller. All right, 18 inches taller. Do you think that means plus 18 or minus 18? Well, to me, 18 inches taller would be plus 18. It's some number plus 18. Okay, so what are we adding 18 to? We're adding 18 to two times the height of the small dog. So we'll just call D for the dog, so two times the D. Okay, so there's our equation right there. So now we're going to go ahead and solve and subtract. So this is the subtraction property of equality. We do order of operations backwards. I'm more comfortable with writing the minus 18 down below instead of doing minus 18 over here and minus 18 over here. But whatever, whatever you guys decide, 
uh, I would be fine with, and I'm sure your, your math teacher would be too. All right, so over here, the 18s will cancel, and 70 minus 18 is 52. All right, and your textbook likes to call that combining like terms or simplifying, whichever one. Okay, and then what else, what are we going to do now? We have 52 equals 2D. Okay, we're going to use the division property. Okay, we're going to divide both sides by 2. Okay, easy enough, and we get um, uh, 2 goes into 52 26 times. Well, 2 times uh, 25 is 50, so 2 times 26 is 52. All right, let's answer the question, you guys. What does uh, D stand for? D stands for the dog in inches, so the small dog is 26 inches. Okay, so let's go ahead and answer the question. Always try to answer it in the context of the problem. So the dog is 26 inches tall. All right, so how does the order of, uh, of steps in solving equations relate to the order of operations? Well, remember, when we're solving equations, uh, we always do order of operation backwards. All right, how about this? Uh, why is it necessary to apply inverse operations on both sides of the equal sign when solving an equation? Well, remember, an equal sign is like a balancing beam, and so to keep it balanced, you have to do the same operations to both sides of the equation. So... All right, okay, so here's another question. We'll do one more. An emu, an emu uh, that measures 60 inches in height is 70 inches less than five times the height of a cockapoo. Well, first of all, this is kind of weird. I don't even know what an emu is. Yeah, I do. I didn't know what a cockapoo is. I had to Google that and get a picture of that. So what's the height of the cockapoo? Well, here's an emu. It's like, a, it's like an ostrich right there, okay? Um, so it's a little bit shorter than an you know, ostrich, but it probably lives with ostriches. And then a cockapoo is like a, a parrot. Okay, and so it's like a big parrot. Anyways, so here's our 60 inches is. Remember, this is is equals right here. So here is 60 is. All right, 70 inches less than. Do you think that means plus 70 or minus 70? Well, less than would mean minus 70, okay? And then here, five times the height of the cockapoo. So I'm going to call the cockapoo K, and so this will be 5K right there, okay? So there's our equation right there. So here we're just going to go plus 70 to both sides, okay? Easy enough. 60 plus 70, well, 6 plus 7 is 13, so 60 plus 70 is 130. And then now, now we're going to go ahead and use the division property and divide both sides by 5, and 5 goes into 130 26 times. Remember, always answer the question in the context of the problem. So K represents the cockapoo in inches. So K is, uh, so the cockapoo is 26 inches tall. So that's over, a little over two feet tall right there. All right, you guys, if you're in my class, that would be your homework assignment. Take care.